Fall is in the air and today I have 30 of the best air fry recipes you've got to make up this fall. From delicious fall roasted veggies and pumpkin desserts to the ultimate fall comfort foods. I am hooking you up. My name is Kathy and don't you just love how much time you can save when you use your air fryer? I've got links to all of these recipes down in the video description box for you. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can snag my cookbook that has more than 150 family favorite tried and tested and lazy cook approved recipes. Ready to get inspired? Let's go. Up first, these veggie enchiladas are not only inexpensive to make, they're healthy and delicious too. First, you'll need some frozen veggies. I'm using corn and peppers and onions, then some black beans, cooked rice, and enchilada sauce. And for the seasonings, you're gonna need paprika, cayenne pepper, cumin, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and of course, some tortillas and cheese. This one's so easy, I've got Olivia helping me out. For the seasoning mixture, go ahead and mix two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and just a pinch of cayenne pepper. Mix it up, and then in a separate bowl, mix two cups of frozen peppers and onions, one cup of frozen corn, one can of black beans that's washed and drained, half cup of enchilada sauce, one tablespoon of oil, and then dump in your seasoning mixture. Mix it all up until it's well combined. And then today I'm gonna use this red silicone pot. This is gonna help my air fryer stay clean since I'm gonna use it again for cooking up the enchiladas. But if you don't have it, you can drop this mixture right into your air fryer basket or another oven safe dish. Spread it into an even layer and then pop it in your air fryer. Cook it at 380 degrees for 10 minutes and be sure to give it a little stir when it's halfway done. And while that's cooking, you're gonna make a foil sling. You wanna make sure it's not too wide, but fold it so it's sturdy and then fold up the edges. Those are gonna be your little handles to help you lift the enchiladas out of the basket. Now that the mixture is cooked, we will just add in some cooked rice. You could totally eyeball it and just add as much as you want. We have about a cup or so that we mixed in. Mix it in long enough so the rice is incorporated and then go Go ahead and place your foil sling in the bottom of your clean air fryer basket. Now Haley is stepping in to help out Olivia fill up these tortillas and it's pretty self-explanatory from here. Just fill them up, fold them up, and place them in the air fryer. Our tortillas were burrito sized so we really kind of filled those up with the filling but if you're using like the regular soft shell taco size you'll probably just use about a third cup of mixture in each tortilla. I actually don't know how to fold one. So Wait, no. Wait, Do I the have... bottoms I... first. Put the bottoms in the inside. Inside. Oh. And then the sides. Put the sides over. And then you flip it on the other side so it stays closed. Yep. We'll save that for a minute later. All right, looks like we have enough for one more. Once you fill up the basket, mist on some avocado oil. You can go to airfryertools.com to see which oil sprayer I like. Then we're gonna air fry them for three to four minutes at 380 degrees. Once that's done, go ahead and pour on some enchilada sauce, just however much you like, you can kind of eyeball it. Then top it with some Colby Jack cheese. We did about a half cup there. You can never have too much cheese though, right? Then cook it at 350 degrees for and three start. more minutes. Let's see how this goes. Da, da, da. Whoa, listen to that sizzle. Yes. Someone's excited. Oh. And then just uber carefully. It's a hotty. It's hot. You could let it cool if needed. But man, that is so easy. And look, minimal mess in the air fryer. One of my huh? favorite things. Yes? Yes. Oh, let's give it a taste test. Oh boy, oh, I don't know. This is like healthy comfort food in my opinion. I am loading up, I got a massive bite here. It's hot still. Runaway tortilla. Time to oh. sit and blow in this for five okay. hours. Five hours? <laughs> I'll be okay. frozen by then. No, I not Mmm. hot. Mm. It's not hot. Mine wasn't hot. Mine wasn't hot. Mm. 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 That was good. Mm -hmm. That's actually really good. Mm -hmm. I would think that I wouldn't like this, but like, I was really excited. Mm. Good. And it's good. There's so much flavor in there. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't even know. Like you can't even tell that they're, it's meatless. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, I'm getting up five stars all the way. How about you? Five stars. <gasps> 
She likes the vegetable burrito enchilada, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My favorite avocado. part of it. Oh, it's the avocado. avocado. <laughs> Ow. Whoops. Mm -hmm. All right, enjoy this one. So good. So good. Yay! Yay! Mm -hmm. You're devouring it. Mm. Look at all those goodies. This apple spice oatmeal is so delicious and pretty much tastes like dessert. But guess what? There's no sugar in it. You'll just need some oatmeal, an apple, some real maple syrup, salt, ground cinnamon, vanilla, and milk. Olivia is helping me with this one. So after you wash your apple, go ahead and slice it into bite-sized chunks. Isn't she a pro? Place the apples into an oven-safe dish that will fit in your air fryer. Then sprinkle on a quarter a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we can do two teaspoons of maple syrup. And just mix it up till the apples are nice and coated. Oh, it smells so good. Then air fry it for four minutes at 380. And now you wait. Now you need to add in about a half cup of oats and just enough milk to cover up the oats and the apples. Then add in another half tablespoon of maple syrup, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half teaspoon of vanilla, and yes, a pinch of salt. I'm gonna hurt you, salt. Then I decided to top it with just a little bit more milk so it's nice and creamy. And you're gonna air fry this at 300 for eight minutes. Let's see if it's done. Ooh. Give it a stir, and because we want our apples a little softer, we cooked it for three and more minutes. We start. Check it out. It smells beautiful. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. Livy's gonna dish up the oatmeal. So we got our ramekins. Scoop and flop. Scoop and flop. Okay, which one do you want? Oh, that one looks perfect. Yeah, I was guessing you would want that one because I want this. Okay, I'll get us two spoons. Should we try it? Yeah. Probably going to be a little hot. I feel like I've had this before. Like, I'm, I haven't tried it yet, but it smells familiar. Mm. Like I've had it. Mmm. How much do you give it? Mmm. Okay, let's see how I give it. it tastes like applesauce. Oh, yeah. Mm. How many stars? Mmm. I think maybe a four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. Hey, good job, us. Good job. Good job to you guys too. So mom is about to try and Ooh, let's excited. see what she thinks. Is this a dessert? I don't know. That's so good. Mm. Mm. Thank you for sharing with me. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Mm. I'm gonna go eat this. Okay. This carrot fry recipe is on page 149 in my cookbook if you have it. If you don't yet, go to yummyairfryrecipes.com and join the thousands of people that have already got this cookbook. You are going to love it. And these are so good. Start with some carrots. Depending on the size, you're gonna want anywhere from four to large ones or I had smaller ones, so we're using about eight of them. Then you'll need some oil, salt and pepper, and Italian seasoning. Wash, peel, and then slice up your carrots so they somewhat resemble French fries, then pat them dry and spray your air fryer basket and then just drop the carrots right into the basket and give it another spray. Then you're just gonna season it and you can really just eyeball it. Salt, pepper, Italian seasoning, however much or little you like. Air fry them at 350 for five minutes. Give them a stir, then depending on the size and how crisp or tender you like them, you're gonna air fry them for five to 10 more minutes. And these are perfectly fork tender for me. Look how gorgeous they are. I'm so grateful my friend gave them to me right from her garden. And there you go, carrot fries. Mm, so good. That's the best way to enjoy carrots. Now if you want them softer, just cook them for like even up to five more minutes. But I personally love this crispy, tender vibe I got going on with carrot fries. So good. These air fryer scallop potatoes are so yummy and totally take me back to my childhood and our Sunday dinners. You'll just need some potatoes, cheese, heavy whipping cream, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. First, peel your potatoes, then pat them dry, and then you wanna slice them up nice and thin. You can cut them as thick or as thin as you like. It's just gonna affect the overall cooking time, so keep that in mind as you are cooking. Now, I'm gonna cook these in my Kasori dual blaze, and I'm gonna drop them right into the oiled pan. Spread them out and give them 
them another spray. It's okay if they're overlapping. Mix them again and air fry at 360 for 18 minutes. And now it's time to make up the spice blend. Get half teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then add a three quarters cup of heavy whipping cream and mix it all up. And now check it out. The potatoes are done and look how beautiful they are. Give them a quick stir. Then it's time to pour the cream mixture right over the top and stir them all together. Now that we have the milk added, we're gonna drop the temperature down to 320 and cook it for another eight minutes. Give it a stir and look how nice it looks. I decided I wanted these a little creamier, so I'm just gonna add in a little more of that heavy whipping cream and cook it for about four more minutes. Now they are looking so great. After a quick stir, top them with some shredded cheese. I cook it for about four more minutes at 370. Don't worry, I know I'm going fast, but I got the entire recipe down in the description box below because look at how beautiful and gorgeous these are. What do you think, Olivia? I think they look super cheesy and the sound is beautiful. I think probably maybe a 10 million. <laughs> also known as a five. You like it? Or an eight or an or a four or a four, or sorry, a nine or a four or ninety. Or Blueberry muffins in the air fryer. This is comfort food at its finest. In a bowl, crack one egg, add in a third cup of oil. I'm using avocado oil, two tablespoons of water, quarter teaspoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of lemon zest. Yes, zest it on up, and then whisk it up. In a separate bowl, combine a third cup of sugar, two thirds cup of flour, and a half teaspoon of baking powder, and just a pinch of salt and combine. Now pour the dry mixture into the wet mixture and stir it up till it's all combined. Then get a half cup of fresh blueberries for the ultimate blueberry experience and mix it all together. Now it's time to make up the crumble. Add a quarter cup of flour, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and two to three tablespoons of slightly melted butter and a dash of cinnamon if you want. Then combine the crumble with a fork until it's blended. Now you've got the batter, your crumble. It's time to spray your silicone muffin liners. Fill them up with the batter until they're about half full. And then if you want to, you can throw a few more fresh blueberries in there. And and lastly, add the crumble mixture to the top and put them right into your air fryer basket. This recipe is making up nine glorious, beautiful blueberry muffins. Pop them in the air fryer at 320 degrees for 10 minutes. And check it out, if I reference my handy dandy cheat sheet, which you can get at airfryercheatsheet.com, you can see these need to come to about 200 internal temperature to be fully cooked. So I'm just gonna let them rest right in the air fryer for a few minutes and they will be perfect. Let's see what Haley has to say about these because she is the ultimate blueberry fan. Mm. It's perfectly lemony and um, blueberry. What is it? It's a blueberry muffin. Wow. <laughs> that's good. I hate blueberry muffins, but that's actually good. You hate you hate blueberry muffins except that one. Oh, good. Way better than Costco, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Woohoo! Mm -hmm. Look, he's choosing the muffin over Chick fil A. Now, I love sauteed cabbage as a side dish. You could also use it like in soups. You could also roast these and add them into your harvest vegetable soups. You just need a head of cabbage and an onion, some minced garlic, and salt and pepper. Go ahead and prep your cabbage by pulling off the outer layers and then cut it into quarters. You're only gonna need half of a head, so go ahead and just slice up the cabbage in nice, thin strips. Look at how gorgeous this is. Do the same for your onion. Slice it up nice and thin, then put the cabbage and onion into your air fryer basket. Mix it around and you know what? I decided to take the tray out of my Kasori Dual Blaze, spray the veggies, add in some salt and pepper and a half teaspoon of minced garlic and give it a good old stir. We're going to start out by air frying for five minutes at 350 degrees, then give it a stir. And even though I'm using the Kasori Dual Blaze and it has two burners on the top and bottom, I still want to give this a good stir for even cooking. Air fry for five to eight more minutes and now you have a delicious roasted side of veggies and I'm excited to see what these little fourth graders have to say about it. Ooh, it smells like Brussels sprouts. Do you want a fork? Yes, please. Mm. 
<laughs> Can I come in? Crunch me. Is it hot? <laughs> Is it good? What does it taste like? Mm -hmm. Does it taste like Brussels sprouts? A little bit. Do you like Brussels sprouts? No. <laughs> it's like, nope. Actually, it's kind of good. Mm -hmm. It's like good, but it's weird. It's actually really good. Is that an onion? Mm -hmm. Is this an onion? Good. That's good. You like it, Kenna? Yeah. And then she just takes over the whole plate. Mm -hmm. All done. How many stars? <laughs> These creamy mushroom pork chops are absolutely divine. So first, you're obviously gonna need some pork chops. Just buy however many you need. If you wanna save money, buy a value pack of pork chops, put the seasonings on that I'm about to tell you about, and then freeze half of it to use on a later night. The spices you need are so simple. You want some paprika, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and a little oil. Then for the sauce, which is absolutely amazing by the way, you'll need some mushrooms, butter, chicken broth, minced garlic, heavy whipping cream, some fresh parsley, and some Italian seasoning. Get yourself a small dish and then throw in a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of paprika, and just mix it up. Then pull out your pork chops. Go ahead and pat those dry. Now my pork chops are a little thin but it's okay it just means I will cook them for less time you can go as thick as you want go ahead and oil them up and then sprinkle on some salt and some pepper and then season them with that super easy rub mixture be sure to season both sides of the pork chop now we're not gonna throw this in the air fryer quite yet set it aside we're gonna make up some mushroom sauce first we're gonna slice up some mushrooms you need about a cup sliced and that ended up being about five to six mushrooms for me then in a skillet throw down two tablespoons of butter, melt it and add in the mushrooms and just stir fry them till they're nice and golden brown. Then get some fresh parsley and you're going to chop that up. You're going to need about one tablespoon. Set that aside and then check out those mushrooms. They're looking nice and brown. Throw in two teaspoons of minced garlic, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and then one tablespoon of your fresh chopped parsley and mix that around. Then add in a half cup of chicken broth. Stir that up and let it sizzle. And then it's time to add in one cup of heavy cream. Once everything's blended in, just let that simmer on low heat for four to five minutes because now we're gonna throw the pork chops right in the air fryer. Pop them in and you're gonna cook it at 380 for five to 10 minutes depending on how thick your pork chop is. If you're not sure, this is when this instant read meat thermometer comes in super handy because you wanna cook it to about 145 for the internal temperature. You can snag this at airfryertools.com. Just click on the air fryer starter kit and you will find it. Now today I'm using the Cassori dual blaze so I did not have to flip my pork chops. If you have a regular air fryer, be sure to flip them. But now let's take these babies out. They're looking so good. Look at that seasoning, it's so beautiful. And then you just pour some of that beautiful sauce on top. And oh my goodness, those pork chops look amazing. I cannot wait to try them. Saucy chops. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. This is like, you know, I get, oh, I love the it. The sauce tastes good, but it's a little hard. Well, that's because they are thinner, so they got slightly overcooked, but that's okay. I just feel like these are so fancy, but so easy. It's mm. good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it wasn't as, it was a little softer. Mmm. I'd still eat it though. No. 3.8 out of 5. Mm, enjoy this one. I'm going to. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to sit here and eat the sauce. It's so good. You know I love sweet potatoes. We're going to chop them up and roast them in the air fryer. First, peel up your potatoes. You just need about a pound of sweet potatoes for this recipe. Here's a tip for chopping roly-poly vegetables like this. If you just make one side flat, then it gives you a nice even surface to cut from. And we're gonna cut these into half inch planks, which is about the fingertip width. And then we'll just, cue. you can see that right there. Then cut the planks into one inch strips, and then again into one inch cubes. The key is just to get them about even sized so everything cooks nice and evenly. Just toss the cubes right into the basket. And I'm just gonna spray it with some avocado oil. You can use your favorite. I've got this new sprayer that John, my one of my viewers, told me about. And just stir that up. And I'm gonna throw on some 
Himalayan salt. And you can add whatever spices you want. Pop that in the air fryer. We're gonna go at 360 for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna put my little shake reminder on right here. Let's go. Here's that shake reminder. Let's take a look. It's looking good. I'm just gonna stir these up and we'll let them finish up on the cooking. Check it out. It starts right up. Here we go. It's done. Oh, beautiful. Let's take a look. Now, this is where you test with a fork. See if they're tender enough. Now, if you want these more roasted, you could spritz on a little more oil and crank it up to 400 for a couple more minutes. But these are looking perfectly tender for me. I cannot wait to try them. All right, taste test number one. Now, I love, like 10 minutes was perfect. 10 minutes at 360. And if your kids wanted something a little sweeter, you could like throw on a little cinnamon and sugar and then crank it up for like one more minute at 400 and your kids would for sure eat these too. I love sweet potatoes. I would give these definitely a four out of five for healthy side. Next, I've got the easiest recipe. It's three ingredients, and I'm gonna show you how to make it work as donuts or cookies. Okay, for the base of these two recipes, you just need a spice cake mix and pumpkin pie filling. But with the spice cake mix, it just has all that extra seasoning that we want, so yummy. And then just throw in the can of the pumpkin puree. And you know what, since we have that pumpkin spice mix, I'm gonna throw a tablespoon in there too. And then just give that a stir up. You don't need beaters or a blender or anything, just you and your spoon, yum yum. Now it's all combined. Look how easy this one is. Are you ready for a trick? To put this batter in the little donut pan, it's a little messy tricky, but if you get a plastic bag, cut the corner off, get a cup, then put the little opening down at the bottom of the cup and then fold it over. Then you can just spoon however much batter you want to right inside the bag. And you just made your own little DIY piping bag. Now we've got the donut pan. I've sprayed that down and just rubbed the oil around it. And this is a little hole we just cut for ventilation. We cut, this was actually a pan of six. I've used this in a couple other videos. I will link to those below. I have other delicious donut and pancake donut recipes. So now you're just gonna squirt that filling right into each little donut cavity. So much faster, so much easier, less messy. And there you go, ta-da. Now, if you want to, you could make more batches of the donuts, or I'm gonna use the same batter and make cookies. I'm just gonna smooth this out a smidgey with my fingers. It doesn't matter too much because this is actually the bottom of the donut. I'm just gonna pop these in the air fryer. See how nicely that fits. Drop this down to 330, and we're gonna start it at six minutes. All right, six minutes in. They're cute and puffy. Let's take a quick internal temp. So looking pretty good. Let's give them two more minutes and I'm just gonna drop that temp down a smidge. Alrighty, let's do a little toothpick test. These are looking good. I'm gonna let them rest for a second. I'm gonna finish up my glaze here. I'm just doing some melted butter and cream cheese. I add a little cream cheese because I just wanna get that cream cheese flavor with the pumpkin. All right, now I'm gonna throw in a cup of powdered sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla and just whisk that up. Okay, we're gonna do about two tablespoons of hot water, and we can add more if we need to. Now, normally when I make this, I don't have the cream cheese in it, so it's usually beautiful and smooth, but we might have some cream cheese lumps. We'll see how it looks. Okay, now that these have cooled a little bit, just gonna carefully pop them over to a baking sheet, and look how cute those are. Now when this is cooled just a smidgey, pop them right there in the icing. Oh, yummy. Set them on a wire rack, parchment paper underneath to catch those drippings. If your icing's not quite thick enough, go ahead and add just a tiny bit, like a tablespoon more of hot water. Now to turn this into cookies, we are just gonna throw in some chocolate chips. I'm eyeballing it, I got about a cup there. And you just cannot go wrong with pumpkin and chocolate chips. Am I right or am I right? Okay, time to throw those cookies in. Now here I'm using a reusable silicone liner. I've had a lot of you ask me about them. My trick though is that you do still need to put the oil on them because they're not nonstick. Now with these, since I don't think they will spread too much, so I can get nine in the air fryer. And I love how easy it is to use my little cookie scoop, but these come out so much easier. Okay, let's pop them in. 
The oven directions say 350 for about 15 minutes, so we're gonna drop it down to 330, and let's start with eight minutes. Alrighty, what do we think here? That looked pretty good. Let's go two more minutes, back to, at 330. They held their shape so well. And look how nicely these pop right off after they've cooled. Now, Brussels sprouts are particularly amazing in the air fryer. This delicious recipe is on page 148 in my cookbook. I washed and kind of cleaned up a pound of these Brussels sprouts. Now I'm just gonna cut them in half lengthwise so they look like this. That's kind of a big daddy. Now, a lot of these bottoms are kind of nasty. I don't know if it's just because I bought it at Walmart or if that's normal. So I'm just cutting those off. Does mean I'm gonna have a little more of these loosey goosey pieces, but a lot of you told me that they are super yummy when they're crisped up in the air fryer. So I'm gonna leave those in. Drop these babies right into a bowl. Pour in about two tablespoons of avocado oil and I'm throwing in a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And I'm just gonna stir that up to get every little Brussels sprout and leafy thingy nice and coated with the seasoning and the oil. And drop these babies in the air fryer. Spread them out a smidgy. My air fryer is hot because I just used it for da -da -da, the squash. We're gonna do 350 for 10 minutes and I'm going to stir it one time in the middle. There's my shake reminder. And these are already smelling fantastic. And they look so beautiful. Let's let them go for another five. That is almost done. I've got a half cup of dried cranberries here and I've got a honey crisp apple and I'm gonna use my little core tool. Boop. And then I'm gonna just slice this up and then cut it in little cubes. Where I live, a honey crisp apple is a little more expensive, but the flavor is so amazing, it's well worth it. And the recipe does call for a quarter cup of chopped pecans. You could do walnuts too. We have nut allergies in the house, so I'm not gonna put those in. Time is up. Wow, Nelly, those are gorgeous. They are pretty tender. Just sprinkle these cranberries over all of that. And the apples. And you would throw in your pecans or your walnuts. And I'm gonna just stir it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna get this going for five more minutes right there at 350. Press and hold to make the beef squat. All right, let's go. Oh, it smells so good. I'm gonna transfer this to a serving platter. Look at that gorgeousness. And the last thing to do is to drizzle on some red wine vinaigrette. You could do homemade or store-bought. It's just a salad dressing. Oh, let's go. All right, Brussels sprouts next. What is this red stuff on it? There's a red wine vinaigrette and some... Dropped it on the table. There's some spice in here too. Mm. Ooh, spicy thing. Oh, that's delicious. Ooh, ooh. A little spice, and I cut down the red pepper flakes a little bit. Wait, there's spice in this? Uh, uh, You're not uh, tasting it, of course. Uh, and sh she's spitting it out. Okay, you can run to the trash. <laughs> you like it? Are you only eating apples? Okay. I tried a Brussels sprout, Mom. <gasps> Do you like it? I've tried a Brussels sprout. Did you like it, though? Yeah. Okay. How many stars five? do you give up out of five? Five. Five stars, huh? I guess so. I'm gonna go with three and a half just because I really like the Brussels sprouts I'm with the bacon and with the uh, maple syrup. First recipe is pesto chicken and veggies in the air fryer. My daughter Haley told me about this one, so she was in town and we cooked it up together. All you need is about a pound of chicken. Chop it up into bite-sized pieces. And then for your veggies, you just need half of a red onion chopped, one bell pepper chopped, and one large zucchini chopped. All that into bite-sized pieces. Hey, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure they are easy evenly chopped just so everything cooks at the same rate. Stir all of that up and you're just gonna add in a quarter cup of basil pesto. Drop it in the air fryer and then you're gonna air fry it at 380 degrees for 12 minutes. At that halfway point, go ahead and just stir it up. That's gonna help everything brown evenly. Then pop back in and let it finish. And now it looks like it's done. We're gonna take the temperature just to make sure that chicken is cooked all the way through. And oh my goodness, that smells so good. Mm. Zucchini, pesto, onion. Bell pepper. Mm. Mm -hmm. Normally I put a mozzarella cheese on it, but we don't have any. That's okay. Mm-hmm. That is so good. Super easy. Five for me. Mm. 
Five stars. This recipe is another one that my daughter Haley created just for the air fryer. It's her roommate's yummy peach cobbler recipe that she always baked in the oven. Now we're making it in the air fryer. Okay, all you need is a box of yellow cake mix and then whatever ingredients are needed for the cake. In this case, it's asking for eggs, water, and oil, and I always use applesauce instead of oil. And then you'll want some cans of peaches and pears. And then of course, I love to use eight ounce ramekins. It's the best way to do cake in the air fryer. So first off, I would just want to drain these peaches and pears. This is going to make eight servings with this entire cake mix. So you could either half it if you want or just make a whole lot of little peach cobblers. And if you're not a fan of pears, that's totally okay. You can just do all peaches. This would probably even work with like apple pie filling. That would probably work too. And then we're going to just make a cake as usual. Dump in the cake mix, add a cup of water, your eggs, and like I said, I do applesauce the exact same ratio instead of vegetable oil. And when that's all mixed up, it's time to put it in the ramekins. Now we for sure want to spray our ramekins with oil. Then you're going to put about a quarter cup of the cake batter in the bottom of each ramekin. Then add in a full layer of peaches and pears. So it looks a little something like that. Then we'll add in a little more batter, just enough to cover up the peaches and pears. And I'm kind of aiming to just be at the top of this little rivet that you can see. That's just because cakes do rise, right? And those are ready to go. Now I'm gonna place these in the air fryer. No, you don't obviously need this tool to put these in, but you will need this tool to take them out. If you don't have this tool, you could use like hot pads to lift it out, but it's a little tricky. Another option would be to put a foil sling, like two thin foil slings under these, and that'll make it a lot easier to pull these hot ramekins out of the air fryer. And yes, we're doing cake, so there's always the chance that the top is gonna burn before the middle is done cooking. I'm lazy today, so I'm gonna just pop this in, keep an eye on it. We're gonna drop that temperature down. I'm gonna do it at 320 for 20 minutes with that shake reminder um, so I can check on it halfway through cooking. Okay, this one's been going about nine minutes and those tops are getting about as brown as I want them. And if we look at this free cooking temp guide that I have for you, go to internaltemperaturechart.com, we can see that cakes and cupcakes need to be cooked right to about 205 degrees. I'm pretty sure these are nowhere near 205. Let's take a look. Well, we're only halfway through so I better get some foil out okay so if you're lazy like me and you're doing foil now when it's hot I just place that little square on top got my trusty little washcloth creates a nice little barrier and I'm just gonna squeeze that because you really don't want that foil to lift over the lip there and then I'm gonna use that cloth to put those back in there sometimes being lazy in the kitchen works wonderfully other times not so much oh and if you do the foil first when that batter is nice and raw just make sure you spray a little oil on there so the foil doesn't stick to the cake batter as that cake rises. All right, now we'll go back in and let that finish up. There's the cakes and yeah, one foil went flying. These have actually been cooling for a few minutes. So let's just check that temp. 190. Okay, I'm gonna call these good. Let's take a peek and see. Hey, maybe it did okay without the foil. Although I guess I don't know for sure when that foil went flying. Here's my handy little plate grabber. Love it. Now if you want, you could dust on a little powdered sugar and even top it with some whipped cream or ice cream. This is still warm, but has cooled. Ready to, you wanna put some on? Whoa, beautiful. Ooh, wow. Okay, the taste test, you don't eat just whipped cream, okay? I'll try not to. Yeah, I need some more whipped cream on there. Did you get some peach in there? Yep. Mmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, That's really good. That is really good. Wow. I don't like the peach in it as much, but I mean, it's called peach cobbler. It's supposed to have peach. All right, what do you say? Honestly? Honestly. That, that's a good dessert. Like, wow. Tastes exactly like peach cobbler. Like your normal, like, Dutch oven or whatever. Oh, I know what. Oh, it just, it just reached Dutch oven status, you're telling me? Yeah, it's, mm. that's good. That is good. It's 100% wow. five all the way for me. Super easy five. That is really good. Ding, ding, five stars. What do you say, little lady? Um, I wouldn't say a five, or maybe like three and a half. I don't know. 
three and a half for you. Check out these buffalo chicken wraps. You can enjoy them hot or cold, no matter what. They're a five star. The ingredient list is simple. You just need one to one and a half pounds of chicken. And for your homemade buffalo sauce, some hot sauce and melted butter. And then for your toppings, some shredded lettuce, some ranch or blue cheese dressing, some flour tortillas, and then things like tomatoes, onions, shredded cheese, whatever you want to fill up the buffalo wrap. So first I'm gonna cover my chicken with paper towel and pound it just to get it to nice even thickness. And that makes cubing it into bite-sized pieces so simple. Just make sure you get your chicken cut about the same size. Throw that in a bowl. Now to make the buffalo sauce, you're gonna get a half cup of hot sauce and add in two tablespoons of melted butter. Stir that up until it's well combined. Go ahead and pour in about half of that buffalo sauce right on your chicken and stir that up so everything is coated. Then open up your air fryer, plop your chicken right into the basket, spread that out so it's in a nice even layer, and then drizzle on a little bit more of the buffalo sauce. You should have about two tablespoons of buffalo sauce left. Set that aside, we're gonna use it at the very end. Then we're gonna pop it in the air fryer at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about six to eight minutes. Just be sure to check that at the halfway point and give it a little stir. And here we go, the chicken is done. Go ahead and pull that out of the air fryer and just throw it in a dish. And now you can drizzle on more of that buffalo sauce. And I am saving this food until my son gets home from football practice. He's gonna love this for dinner tonight. I got a hungry boy home from football practice. And this meal is so easy. I'm gonna serve this cold. I've got the chicken chopped up in small bite-sized pieces, some lettuce, tomatoes, some ranch, some cheese, and tortillas. And check it out. This is hungry boy food right here. Lettuce, tomatoes, and the ranch. Whoa, the ranch, hello. Check out the buffalo wrap. It's pretty busting. Okay, have a bite. Mmm, wow, that was really good. They're just very good taste. I don't know what it is though. Maybe it's the chicken. Is there like a sauce on this or anything? Or? Yeah, it's a buffalo sauce. I think that's what it is. And ranch. It tastes super good. There you go. And what do you, what do you give it for stars? 10, also known as five. Five out of five, yeah. Five out of five. Yay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's really good. For roasted potatoes, simply dice them up, give them a quick little bath in some hot water, pat them dry, add some oil, season them as you want, and then you'll cook them in the air fryer at about 380 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna make some pumpkin pie cake bars. Now for these pumpkin pie cake bars, we're gonna use some classic yellow cake mix, but we're only gonna use half the box since I'm cutting this recipe in half. So what I'm doing is getting this nice bowl and I'm gonna measure it out because the box is gonna be divided for different parts of the recipe. So if you don't make a mess here, we can see that there's about 430 grams in the entire box. And what I'm gonna do is just take out 215 grams. I don't have to worry about you know, switching out bowls because I'm just gonna subtract it from here until it weighs 215 grams and I'm almost there. There we go, I'll call that close enough. So we can put half of the mix aside and we will save it for something else that I'm gonna show you later down the road. Now from this half of the mix, I'm gonna get a half cup of it and set it aside because it's gonna be used for the topping. Now with this remaining cake mix, I've got a quarter cup of melted butter I'm gonna add in. I did let this cool to room temperature, but now it's starting to get a little bit too solid. It'll work out okay though. And then next we need a half an egg. What the heck, how are we gonna do that? Keep watching. I wanted to show you how we split these recipes in half, especially when we have like half a box, half a can, things like that. We want to get it accurate. So we're going to turn on our scale here and go ahead and just crack your egg in a dish and you'll see it's weighing about 57 milliliters or grams. A milliliter and gram comes to the same measurement. Now we want to whisk this up really good. Now some of you I'm sure are wondering why are you having a recipe? Why don't you just make the full thing in an oven? Well I know that there's a lot of you that are single people or older people, empty nesters, and you just really don't need a huge 9 by 12 pan of treats. So I'm making smaller versions of the recipe. I will put oven instructions down below as well for people that just want to use their oven. So once it's nice and mixed You'll see the measurement should still be the same. There we go, 55 grams. And just for kicks and giggles, let's just see how that looks when we measure it out. Just barely over three tablespoons. If I put that down nice and level, not quite four, but for right now I'm gonna put this back in here. Oh, it's almost, see, 
I left a gram inside that other cup. So now you simply are going to cut this number in half. So half of 55 slash 54 is about 27 grams. So you're gonna just pull out enough egg till this gets down to 27. So it won't be a full another tablespoon or will it? There we go. So now we've got the 27 grams left. So we have half the egg in the mixture. And I'm just showing you another reason why I absolutely just love my kitchen scale. So handy and useful for times like this. So we're gonna just mix this up and it's gonna be nice and thick. Today I'm gonna use a seven inch spring form pan. If you have this cake barrel from the air fryer accessory kits, that would work as well. Or I even have a seven inch cake pan that will work. I will link to all of these down below. To be safe, I do just wanna lightly spray the bottom of that pan. I know some people also like to put parchment paper down there, but since we've got our handy dandy oil sprayer, we'll just use it. Now go ahead and spread the batter right into the bottom of your pan. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Go ahead and spread this around. It's kind of thick. You really could use your fingers too if you want to. So now we're gonna just put this little guy in here and we're gonna give this layer a little bit of a head start on the baking process. And we will go for 320. I'm gonna start 10 minutes. I'm going to put that shaker miter just so I can take a peek at about five minutes. While that's cooking, we're gonna get the next layer ready. And now I've got my scale switched over to show me ounces and we're gonna do seven and a half ounces of pumpkin pie puree or pure pumpkin. It's not the pie filling. And if you're buying the big old cans, you just need seven and a half ounces. Or if you're buying the regular cans, it's just half a can which actually comes out to, to about three quarters of a cup. So there we go, our seven and a half ounces. And then we're gonna add in a third cup of milk and this time just one egg and we'll just mix that together. Okay, this filling is looking good. Got all the egg blended in there. And let's take a peek here after five minutes. It's looking good. I'm gonna just let it keep on going. And for the last step, there's our half cup of cake mix that we set aside. And in here, I've got two tablespoons of sugar and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Gonna just add that. Just give that a quick little mix. And then I've got two tablespoons of room temperature butter. I'm gonna throw in here, this is our crumble topping. Just blend that up. You should have some little crumbles. Okay, it's done. Go ahead and take that out. I'm gonna close this up to keep it warm. Okay, the next step is to put in our pumpkin layer. Spread it out as thin or as thick as you would like it. This portion is not super sweet. The sweetness is coming from the crust and from the topping, but it's Definitely nice and pumpkin-y. And the last step is that glorious crumble. Now, here's a little hint. When it comes to crumble toppings and air fryers, it's gonna blow it all around. So, we have a couple options here. Now, yes, we do have butter in there, but if you want, you could kind of lightly spray. It will just kind of weigh that down a little bit so it doesn't blow everywhere. Or you could cover that with foil and then just take the foil off the last couple of minutes. But we're gonna just go with that spray that I did. So pop it back in the air fryer. And we're gonna hit this back down to 320 and we'll start with 10 minutes and see how it looks. Here we go. And that looks beautiful. Okay, since I'm like cutting the oven time in half here for the air fryer, I'm just gonna poke with the fork. I think I'm gonna give it a little more time. This is nice and golden, but I feel like we can definitely brown that a little bit more if we want to. So crank it back down to 320 and let's give it five more minutes. All right, let's take a peek. That looks wonderful. I'm gonna call it good. So we're gonna let this cool. Let's see how the spring form pan goes. It's all cooled down. Yay, it's beautiful. Top it with whipped cream, yum, yum. Now this next one is eight hearty servings and I'm gonna freeze half of them. Let's make cowboy dinner. You're gonna need two pounds of ground turkey or ground beef, half of a yellow onion, about a cup of frozen corn, one and a half cups of salsa, a can of black beans that are rinsed and drained, and a cup of medium cheddar cheese or whatever kind of cheese you love. Then you can make your own homemade cornbread or be cheap and easy like me. These are like less than 50 cents a box. And I'm not sure if we're gonna need one or two for each half of the recipe, but I've got two boxes. This time I'm putting all two pounds of ground turkey in the air fryer. And I remember that Michelle gave me this tip about blocking these little holes with some foil, so. I'm gonna do that and chop up half of that onion. And I can put the onions right on top of the meat. And again, 380. Since I have more meat in there, I'm gonna go six minutes first. Oh, it's looking good. I just wanna stir this up, get those onions mixed in a little more. 
My foil's doing a pretty good job there. And I wanna break up this meat a little bit more so it's not like a meatloaf. And then I'm just gonna throw on some salt and pepper. And let's continue cooking that. It's got about five more minutes. I'm gonna hurry and make up this cornbread. Just need a third cup of milk and one egg. Mix. And then I'm gonna let that rest. That one's done. Get it out of the air fryer and onto a paper towel. And then just break it up a little bit more. Got my big bowl again. I'm gonna dump the meat right in the bowl. I'm gonna throw in that corn, the salsa, those beans, and just mix all of that goodness together. And because I've got cornbread involved, I do just wanna lightly grease my pan. And I'm gonna freeze half of this mixture in a freezer bag. Yes, I already wrote on it. And you guys, I just seriously need new measuring cups. They're just wearing out. But what I'm gonna do is just alternate my scoops of meat mixture into my freezer bag and into my dish, just so I can split it up fairly evenly. The second meal is done. This is gonna be perfect when I'm out of town and my husband's gonna make dinner for the kids. If you are gonna freeze, and it's gonna thaw out a lot quicker if you flatten it out. Plus, it's a lot easier to store in the freezer. So if we're just doing half the recipe, you just need to grate about four ounces of cheese. That is gonna come to, well, about a half a cup. Look how much that made there on the cornbread. So you could just do one box of this corn muffin mix, which by the way, it yields six muffins. And then you're just gonna scoop your batter right on top of this cheese mixture. Just gently spread it around. Yeah, use a wet finger to spread it. Probably will work a little better. Just do your best to cover everything up. Now this recipe comes from Mel's Kitchen Cafe. It's her cowboy dinner recipe. By the way, she does have a homemade cornbread recipe on here. The oven instructions say bake it at 40 to 45 minutes. That's for the full pan at 375 degrees. But in the air fryer, we are gonna just crank that down. Now with cornbread, because that can kind of burn easily, especially when we have that heating element so close, I'm gonna pull this down to about 330 and instead of like 45 minutes, we're gonna do 15. How does that sound? I like it. Okay, we are about nine, 10 minutes in. That's looking nice and golden. Let's just see if we can tell. It's about 155 inside. Just wanna see if that's cooked through. Uh, no, it needs, it needs a little more time. So I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. I'm not gonna cover this with foil, but if you wanted to at this point, you could cover it with foil to keep it from browning much more. But I'm guessing we just need a few more minutes. Also another option would be to like lower, you could lower your temp and then maybe cook it longer if you were worried about that top burning. Oh boy, I turned that back up to 330 and I did not check on it anymore, but oh, look at that. That looks really, really good. Let me just dig in the center here a little bit. That looks good, we are good to go. That looks so good. Mmm. Mm. This just reminds me of like chili with cornbread on top. So good. What do you think? How many do you give it? Mm, like a three out of five. A three? I'm gonna give it a four. If you have just a few people that love squash, the air fryer is the perfect solution. Wash your squash and then you need a nice big daddy knife to cut this thing in half. And um, hold please. Okay, I'm gonna try this now. This one pokes through a little easier. This will be the hardest part right here, friends. Here we go, yes. Yay! Okay, we're gonna just scoop out all of the seeds. Super easy to do. And I'm just gonna use my knife to scrape out these little stringy guys here a little bit. Now we're gonna just score the inside, make some cute little squares. Okay, now I've got two tablespoons of brown sugar, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, and one eighth teaspoon of salt. And I'm just gonna mix this up. And now comes the butter. Now you could make this healthier and probably do like coconut oil. I just had room temperature butter, so yes, it's messy. I'll mush it around a little bit. Then add half the mixture to each of your little squashes here. This one's a little bit smaller, so I think I'll add more to the bigger one. Then I'm just gonna mush all of this around just so it's touching all of the flesh of squash. Do you call it squash or squash? Okay, now I'm gonna place these right here in my air fryer. If you have a smaller one, you'll have to do one at a time, but this is my 5.8 and it fits both of them very nicely. Let's pop this in. 
The recipe I found called for 375, but mine cooks in 10 increments, so I'm gonna go down and then I can crank it up to 380 if I want to at the end. And it says to cook for 25 minutes, so let's see how it goes. Okay, this beauty is done, oh mama. And a quick test with the fork is telling me that, oh my goodness, this is perfect. Do you see that? Hey, I've got a helper. We're gonna rate these, okay? Five star the best. So decide, this is cooled down, so it's just like, mm, so good. There was butter and brown sugar and cinnamon. It's almost like a dessert. Ready? That's a nice big bite. Mm. Mm. That is so good. Are you kidding me? No? One stop. One. One. Oh, five for me. This is glorious. Mm. I kind of like it. I want to give it a one. That's a winner and so easy. My very favorite Thanksgiving side dish, can you guess it? Sweet potato casserole. First start with about two pounds of sweet potatoes. For me, that is these three cute little guys. Wash them, peel them, then chop them up. Toss them in your Instant Pot, throw about a cup of water in there, sprinkle in some yummy salt, pop on the lid, make sure it's sealed, set it to high pressure for 10 minutes. Release that pressure, drain your potatoes, pop them back into the bowl, and then just mash those up. Add in a half cube of butter, a whopping half cup of sugar, and then add two beaten eggs to some milk, and add that to your mixture. Stir that around till it's nice and creamy. And then throw in a half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of vanilla, and then just mix all of that together. Now you can use any dish that will fit right in your air fryer. As long as it's oven safe, it's going to work in your air fryer. But today I'm gonna to use these super cute eight ounce ramekins. Scoop the mixture into whatever container you choose and just try to resist taking a lick. This makes about four cups. It's gonna fill up your seven inch cake barrel pan very nicely. Otherwise, it makes enough to fit into five of these eight ounce ramekins. This is pretty much like a dessert, so you could just set one in the fridge to cook up for yourself later. Yummy. Now for the crumble, you need about three tablespoons of soft butter, about a quarter cup of flour, and about a third cup of brown sugar, and then just mix all of that up together. Add on the crumble. Yeah, I might have put a little too much butter in mine. Pop it in the air fryer and set it for 320 Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius. And we're gonna first run it for about six minutes. Now that this is done, oh, that looks luscious. Get yourself some mini marshmallows and just plop those right on top. You might wanna press them down a little bit just so none of them blow away. And if you wanna throw some chopped pecans in right now, this is the time to do it. But if you've been watching me, you know we've got nut allergies in my house, so I don't use those pecans. Oh my goodness, they look like little mugs of hot cocoa. Leave it at 350, and we'll just give it about three more minutes. Just enough time to toast up our marshmallows. Let's take a look. Ah, so good. Just use some tongs to carefully lift those out. My favorite sweet potato casserole. I hate sweet potato. Give it a try, because there's marshmallows and brown sugar involved. Ready? Ooh. Are you ready? And you know it's so yeah. good. It's like a dessert. That is so good. Definitely. You like it? So good. Five. All the way. Two six. and a half. Two and a half. Five, six, two and a half. And today we are gonna make some of Olivia's favorite veggies. She really likes raw radishes and we've never had them cooked before. So we are gonna test it out. Are you excited for it? Yeah? yeah. Okay. All right, so first we're gonna start out with two little bunches of radishes. Mm. See, she likes them raw. So go ahead and trim those radishes off and then you're gonna wash them. Then just cut these in half or if they're really big ones, Chop them into quarters. You just want to get it so everybody's about the same size. Now I'm going to just let these dry. We're just going to make up a cute little seasoning blend. We're just going to do a quarter teaspoon of each. I got garlic powder, onion powder, and some parsley flakes. Then it's just salt and pepper to taste. So I'm just going to throw a little bit in there. And now that I've got my seasoning blend, I'm going to just mix it all up. Then go ahead and throw the veggies in the air fryer. 
Now today I'm using the nine quart instant vortex Versa Zone air fryer. So in this nine quart air fryer, I have plenty of room. You can see that this recipe will totally work in like a five to six quart air fryer with no problem. Okay, then you can just lightly mist that oil on. I'm just gonna shake the seasonings right over these radishes and I'm just gonna stir those up. Now remember, I can always add more oil later if I feel like I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the air fry function on this particular air fryer. These are just presets, they don't really change the function. So I'm gonna do 400 and the time is gonna be a total of 20 minutes, but we're gonna just reduce it because in this particular air fryer, it does a preheat time. So I'm gonna knock it down by three minutes and there you can see it's starting the preheat function, but I already have my food in there, so we are just going to adapt. All right, this one just beeped to let me know it was time to do some rotating on that food and look at those cute radishes. They're definitely getting crispy and beautiful. Now this is the point where you could just decide, do these look like they're drying out more than like roasting? Then you could just do a quick little squirt of spray, stir it up a little bit more, then put them back in that even layer and we'll let them finish on up. Alrighty, these little fellas are done. Now this one just makes like two servings and I totally could have put way more in this air fryer. I'm excited to taste test these. All right, time for the radish taste test. Mmm. They're definitely not as peppery as they are when they're raw. What do you think? It's actually really good. It's actually really good. Yes, it is. And it's also good for you. How many stars do you give it? Point. Four and a half stars. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -mm. After making air fryer green beans, you will never steam them again. Here's a trick for cutting beans. Bundle them up and just use a knife and chop off the ends. Then line them up on the other side. Chop and chop. And then just pull out the bad ones. And then I just popped them in the strainer while I cut up all the rest. And then I put them in a bowl of water to soak for a little bit. And just drain them out right there. And drop them in the air fryer. Pop them in at 350 for five minutes. Here they are after three. I just want to check on them and give them a little stir. Make sure everybody's drying well. And now that they're nice and dry, I'm just going to spray some of my oil with my Misto can. I'm using avocado oil today. Mix it up. And then I like to throw in some salt and pepper. You could also throw on some garlic powder. Give it a good mix. And I'm going five more minutes at 350. Now at this point, you can call it good. They're nice and hot and cooked. Or if you want them softer, go for another five minutes. You make it work for you. These salmon fajitas are so easy to whip together and they taste amazing. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a foil sling for my salmon. And it's just gonna make it a lot easier to lift out of the air fryer. There you go, just fold it to fit right in your basket with little handles. And your five ingredients are your favorite fajita seasoning, your salmon, some onions and peppers, and tortillas, optional ingredients, lime, cilantro, avocado. And I love using coleslaw mix to add a nice crunch to fajitas. Okay, then go ahead and place your salmon right in the air fryer. Okay, then we're gonna place the peppers and onions all around the salmon. And I've got my avocado oil in here and I'm just gonna spray over all of that. And then just sprinkle that fajita seasoning right over the top. Then I'm gonna massage that seasoning into the salmon a little bit. And yeah, I'm just using my hands to mix everything around. You can use any peppers you want. We just add mini peppers on hand, so that's what we used. Pop it in the air fryer and we're gonna cook at 350 for about eight minutes. Okay, this is done and it looks gorgeous. We're gonna take a quick internal temperature just to make sure it's cooked correctly. And this one is a thicker, so I'm gonna cook it maybe for about three more minutes. Okay, now we'll take a peek and boom, we are at temp, if not more. Okay, then just use your cute little foil sling and lift that right onto a cutting board. Then you can just flake off that salmon. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be amazing. Then it's time to assemble your fajita. And if you want to, squeeze on some lime, throw on some little cilantro, some of that coleslaw mixture, and some avocado. Salmon fajitas. Mmm. Mm. 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 
That's a five. You want to try? No. No? I She's... don't like salmon. Okay, non-seafood lovers won't like this one. So I'm super jazzed about this next recipe. It was shared by John H. And he developed this three ingredient apple fritters recipe that I'm so excited to try. For this recipe, you just need some apple pie filling, some Pillsbury dough, and some cinnamon. Now just get a knife or a bench scraper and you're just gonna cut this up into a bunch of chunks. Doesn't really matter how big and small, you just are gonna chunk it up. Now, of course, you could do this with any homemade dough, but <laughs> we are all about easy around here. Okay, when you have your dough all ready, you're just gonna sprinkle on, hello, oops, about a tablespoon of cinnamon, and then you just need about two third cups of apple pie filling. You can see it's about half of the can that I'm using here. And now, to be true to the apple fritter life, you just use the bench scraper, and I know a true baker would do this much more gracefully than I am right now, but you'll just mix up all of that cinnamon and apple pie filling with the Pillsbury dough. It's time to preheat your air fryer and look at my beautiful log. I think it's gonna get a little messy here, but I'm gonna cut this into eight little logs. I don't know. What do you think here? We are just gonna roll with it and see how this goes. So he told me to do eight. I've got six fatty ones, so. Okay, so I put parchment paper in the air fryer and John told me to spray it with the oil spray. And now it's getting messy and I've gotta put these right in the air fryer basket. They're so cute. And I'm not sure if I have these sized right and I kind of feel like I put too much apple, but we'll just see how they turn out. All right, then we're gonna spray with some oil. My air fryer is nice and hot. Okay, we're gonna bake these at 350 for 12 minutes, and I'm gonna turn on my shake reminder to flip them. While that's cooking, I'm gonna melt a half cube of butter, and I'm going to do it right here in a pan instead of the microwave, because I wanna brown the butter. Just keep it down low, and it's time to check on my fritters, and they look beautiful. I'm just gonna try and give them a little flip. So I'm just using my silicone spatula. Wow, I'm really impressed with how nice these are looking. Flip them over. It's kind of falling apart. Then we'll squirt this other side with oil and let it finish cooking. My butter is looking just nice and brown. I'm gonna take that off the heat and let that cool for just a moment. Then I'm doing about a cup of powdered sugar and add in about a half teaspoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of milk and that butter and we're just gonna whisk it up so it's all ready for those apple fritters. Okay, these are done. And look how glorious they look. You might need to let these cool just a minute, but our icing is ready. I'm just gonna spread the glaze right over these hot apple fritt fritters, and I have them on a baking rack to cool, and that icing will just melt down through all the cracks and crevices. I can hardly wait to try these. All right, I got some of my girls here. We are gonna taste test apple fritters. You're making a face. <laughs> you and I are I'm like, so excited. give me all the apple fritters. Try that little one. Mmm, ready? Let's go. Mmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. This has a really good flavor. It is good. Mm-hmm. I think it's better with like the, the cinnamon. Apples. How many stars? Five stars? Good job, John. We like it. Another great super affordable dinner is a baked potato bar. And baked potatoes in the air fryer are absolutely scrumptious. If you can get like even sized potatoes, all the better. But if not, it's okay. Give them a good scrub. Now in this instance, the air fryer does not cook potatoes faster. If you're gonna air fry them, you would wanna first dry them off, but I'm gonna do my little time-saving trick. First, of course, pierce them with a fork. That's important to do no matter how you're baking them. I'm going to parboil these babies in the microwave first. Five minutes right there in the microwave. Potatoes have started to cook. We'll finish them in the air fryer. Okay, I'm preheating that air fryer and also just kind of drying it out. Um, these potatoes, the good thing about the microwave is that it also dries them for the most part, they are a little bit hot. They've been resting for a few minutes. Now that I have them fairly dried off, I'm gonna spray these potatoes with oil. Yes, ma'am, I sure am. You can either massage oil on it or flip them and spray both sides. This just makes, oh my goodness, the inside of the potatoes taste fantastic. Oh, I thought I hit a preheat button, but I guess I didn't. So here we go. I'm also gonna salt these up a little bit, just 
Seriously, if you have not done baked potatoes in the air fryer yet, just wait. Okay, so I could get like three smalls and three mediums in there. And I actually have the recipe for baked potatoes on page 131 in my cookbook. Normally we go like 40, 45 minutes, but since I did some pre-cooking already, I'm gonna go with 20 minutes. I got the shake reminder. I don't need to preheat and we'll flip them 10 minutes in. 20 minutes later, boom, those are hot and ready. And check it out. Yummy, yummy. Air fryer baked potato. Top it with some chili, sour cream, and even a little cheese if you want to. Throw some veggies on the side and dinner is served. So good. Mm -mm -mm. Now I've had some requests for air fryer empanadas. Disclaimer, I'm just your little gringo here, which means I'm just a white girl and I, I'm not gonna do an awesome job cooking authentic Latino or South American food here. So bear with me. You need something called discos or you could make like the pastry from scratch. I couldn't find the discos. It looks like disco, I don't know. I couldn't find those in my store. So I opted for Pillsbury French bread. And here's what you need for the filling. And honestly, the filling could be whatever, but I'm gonna be cutting up some onion and pepper. I've got cumin, oregano, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, and some tomato sauce, and not the protein. And of course, I told you I'm using this Pillsbury French bread dough today. You could buy a pre-made pie crust or make something from scratch. So I've got my ground beef here in the air fryer. This time, I'm gonna add in that onion and pepper that I chopped up. They're just finely minced. And I told you how I like to do the seasonings at the halfway point. But with these minced veggies here, I do want them to get that full cook time. So let's pop them in. And remember, if you have the older model of the Kasori, just click one of these top four buttons. That's gonna turn on the shake reminder. And then you can adjust the time and temperature. So I'm gonna go with seven minutes and we will stir it at the halfway point. While that's cooking, I'm gonna gather up my spices here. So I'm doing a half teaspoon of each, the cumin, garlic powder, oregano, and then a half teaspoon of each, salt, pepper, paprika, and some onion powder. Then we'll pop that in the meat here in just a second. All right, here we go, let's take a peek. This time it doesn't seem to be cooking as quickly, probably because I have all those veggies in. So I'm gonna just mix it up and pop it back in. All right, let's take a peek now. The veggies are looking more translucent. And some people wonder, why don't I take the temperature of ground beef? And that is just because I can usually just look. Like if you see pink, it's not all the way cooked. So definitely we need a few more minutes on this, but now is when I'm going to add in those spices. So just sprinkle those on top and let's stir that up. Oh, this is gonna be fantastic. I think we're good to throw this in for just about two more minutes. There we go. Does that ground beef smell so good? Does it, huh? Yes, it does smell good. And now it's looking just really nice. While I let that meat cool, I went ahead and cut up my French bread dough and I'm rolling them out so they're about the width of my hand here. To make it easier, I put my meat in this big bowl and I'm gonna add in four ounces or about a half cup of some tomato sauce. Throw in just a couple tablespoons of water. There we go. You will want to lightly spray your air fryer, then place about two tablespoons of meat on half of the dough here. Maybe it was three, I don't know. Go ahead and fold that over. And what I'm learning is that this uh, French bread dough is really fluffy and just kind of bounces back up. So go ahead, whatever you have, your pie crust, this dough maybe just doesn't make it look super authentic, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna taste good. There we go. Then just pop it right into your air fryer basket. Then just brush on a little egg wash. And we're gonna cook these at 350 for eight minutes. Okay, it's been about six minutes, maybe a little longer, and I decided to peek, and they really look like they are good and done. Now you could make up a whole bunch of these. You could eat them all up. You could freeze them for later, or you could just freeze your extra meat It'll be great for tacos. You could use it another night for empanadas. You could use it on a salad. Lots of options. It's so nice to have frozen cooked meat ready to go. I am so excited to give these a try. Mmm, 
good flavor. I think that the French bread dough probably was not the best choice. It sure makes it a little more chewy than probably like a pie crust would, but the filling is fantastic. So give this one a try. I wanna show you how you can make meatloaf, potatoes, and your red cheese all at the same time in this small little air fryer. Now for context, I'm just using the rest of the beef that I had and it's almost one pound here. And today I'm just gonna make meatloaf like my mom always used to, which was just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff in. But if you like detailed recipes, I have a super yummy one on page 45 of my cookbook. It's a yummyairfryrecipes.com. I'll also link to it below for you. But my mom would just kind of throw stuff in and that's what I'm gonna do today. So I've got about a quarter cup of oatmeal. I'm gonna just throw in some salt. Actually, that's pepper. And now some salt. And I've got some onion powder. And I'm just throwing in some garlic powder. And my mom would always throw an egg in there. Whoops. And then I got some chopped onions that I have on hand. I'm gonna throw some Worcestershire sauce in. My mom wouldn't do this, but I love it, so I'm throwing it in. And then, yes, we would always throw in just a little bit of mustard and, of course, ketchup. And then, yep, we would just throw our hands in there and mush it all up. Let me know how your mom always made meatloaf. Was she like my mom, just, just kind of wing it, or was she a little more structured? Now, in my opinion, this is looking a little too wet, so I'm gonna just throw more oatmeal in there. Maybe you do breadcrumbs. My recipe in the cookbook actually used crushed saltine crackers. So just whatever works. Again, lots of options with this. If you have like silicone muffin liners, you could do individual portions in these. You could use a ramekin. If you're making a big batch, I would recommend putting them in whatever you're gonna bake them in and then freeze the rest. You can just cook up what you're gonna eat tonight. But what I'm gonna do is just get like a portion of this, about a quarter pound of this, and kind of make my own little loaf. The key to this is having it about the same thickness throughout. That way it's gonna cook nice and evenly. Then you're gonna just put this to one side of your air fryer. And I'm gonna give this a little head start. I'm gonna bring that up to 380 and cook that for about five minutes. While that's cooking, you're gonna go ahead and wash a potato, pierce it a few times with a fork, then you're you're gonna pop it in the microwave for about four to five minutes. And the third part of this meal is gonna be your veggie. Now, usually I will pull out some frozen broccoli and throw that in, but I have some peppers and onions. I'm gonna chop those up. The thing to consider is whatever veggie you choose, if it's more of a root type of veggie, it's gonna take longer to cook, so you would wanna throw that in right there at the beginning with the meatloaf. But for these peppers and onions, 10 minutes tops will cook these beautifully, so I'm just gonna have them ready when I throw the potato in. Okay. The meatloaf got a little bit of a head start. I'm gonna throw my potato in there. And I actually really love to add a little oil to my potato because it just makes it super moist inside. A little salt. And then this third little spot, whoops. Well, I dumped it everywhere. So that doesn't matter though. We can just throw this all over, get all my veggies in there. And I'm just gonna spray those a smidge. Anyway, if I was more graceful, they all would have landed right about here, but you know me. Okay, so that's gonna go in. Bring this up back to 380 and we'll give it about, about 12 minutes and see how that goes. Now there's always a few different factors to consider when you're cooking up beef. It's gonna depend on the thickness, so whatever container you have it in or if you have it thinner, more like a hamburger patty, that works too. The key to success is an instant read meat thermometer and knowing what temperature to cook it to. Now I have a free download that I give to all subscribers of my newsletter. It has all of the internal temperatures for ground beef. It even includes baked goods. I just have this tape to the inside of my cabinet door right above the air fryer I almost always use. So if you just go to internaltemperaturechart.com, put in your email, I will email you that free download and you'll get my Sunday morning emails that come with more air fryer recipes plus any little facts and tidbits about me every Sunday morning. Oh, and silly me, I forgot to turn on that shake reminder, but it doesn't matter. I can do that whenever I want to. It'll still do the right time for me. Let's just take a quick peek here. My baked potato is coming in at 140. Ground beef, oh my goodness, it is almost done. I think I'm looking right on track. I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate my potato so that other side gets crispy. Stir up my veggies a little bit. I'll go ahead and just flip my meatloaf. Now, usually I'll make like a little ketchup brown sugar nutmeg glaze, but, and then I'll just put it here on the top at the very end. But I'm gonna skip that for today. And since I'm so close to being done, I think we can get this done in about two more minutes. And I'm gonna crank that up to 400 just so I can crisp up the other side of the potato faster. 
while that was cooking, I just got my little parchment paper liner here and I made up the rest of my meat into meatballs. I'm gonna freeze that for later. This is done. Let's just give it a double check here. Temperatures are looking on point. I'm gonna just let that rest for a few minutes. Leave it right there in the air fryer. And just like that, an air fryer meal for one. Okay, lots to choose from. You love potatoes, yes? A little pepper, a little onion, a little meatloaf, a little potato. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. For me, five all the way. I give it a five. You love it? Right here is the side of veggies that I make the most often. It's pretty much effortless. It's frozen broccoli. And by the way, this instruction that I'm gonna give you will work for different types of veggie blends just like this one that I absolutely love from Costco. You simply throw it in the air fryer, pop it in, and cook it at 300 for 10 minutes. And boom, you've got the easiest side dish ever. We're gonna make some poor man's lasagna. I'm gonna make all of it now, but I'll assemble it in two parts and freeze the other half for another night. So first, we're gonna get that pasta going. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna start cooking up some ground turkey. And did you know that you can cook ground beef or ground turkey in your air fryer? I've got my Kasori dual glaze air fryer today. Because I'm making like four recipes, I'm gonna save myself some hassle, put some foil here in the bottom, and then throw the grate right on top. Then I'm gonna just put a pound of this ground turkey right in here and kind of crumble it up or like squish it up. And then according to page 36 of my cookbook, we wanna cook this at 380 for about seven or eight minutes. Pop that in. And remember, I'm using the dual blaze, that means there's a burner on the bottom, so I won't have to shake this, but I do want to kind of break that meat apart. So I don't forget, I'm going to just run it for four minutes first. Okay, there we are halfway through cooking. I want to mix it up because I don't want these huge chunks. And I'm going to add in my seasoning. Now it calls for a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, but I am all out of Italian seasoning. So I'm throwing in just a mix of parsley, oregano, basil, and a little garlic powder and some onion powder. Oh, that means my pasta's ready. Whatever Italian type seasonings you have on hand. And oops, I'm remembering these holes. Things kind of fall down in there. So I'm going to spread this out along the edges. And I just lifted that up, grab those chunks of meat. I just don't want them down there cooking in the grease. And we will just continue cooking. I'm gonna crank this up to 400 and give it about five more minutes. Pasta's done and we're gonna drain it. Now, a couple things. You're gonna add some softened cream cheese to this hot pasta, but I forgot to, but I have a solution here. We just wanna do it while it's still nice and hot. Also, I forgot to mention, you're only gonna use about three-fourths of a 16-ounce box or bag of penny pasta. I'm just gonna cube up this cream cheese, which you might wanna do either way, even if you have it kind of room temperature. And I could probably soften it a little in the microwave, but we're just gonna do it this way. Throw that cream. Oh, there's the beef, but let's get this cream cheese soaking in the hot pasta. And I'm gonna just cover up that cream cheese with that hot pasta, that's gonna help it melt and get creamy. And while that gets nice and warm, let's check in our meat here. There we go, that's nice and done. I'm gonna just line my cutting board with paper towels and you could just scoop that meat out or if you have the basket style of air fryer, you can just lift it out and dump it right onto the paper towel. And I'll just chop it up a little bit more here. And either way, all that grease, well it dropped right down there to the bottom, which means I could just pick up that gross foil and drop it right into my trash can. And I'll just use a paper towel to grab any grease that I spilled out of that paper towel. And we are ready to start layering. Okay, you can see my cream cheese is mostly melted and I've got it all blended in. We have some cottage cheese we wanna add to this pasta mixture. So I'm gonna just jump into a little bit larger bowl since my pot wasn't huge. And we'll just mix that all together. And now we're gonna start layering. You have a couple options. If you wanna cook some of it right now, these Pyrex dishes from Costco, they fit in the Kasori Pro 1 and also in the dual blaze model. Or you can get like a nine by nine foil pan. You will need to lift up these ledges so it can fit in the Kasori Pro 2, but it fits nicely here in the dual blaze. So today I'm gonna fill this one for eating now and I'm gonna use this one for freezing for later. Then I'm gonna put some of the pasta in each container. 
then I'm going to add some of the ground turkey or ground beef mixture that I'm layering on the ground beef or ground turkey and then put some sauce over the top. Then we will repeat the layering, add the rest of the meat and the rest of the sauce. Now, no, it does not need to look beautiful. Just spread it around and we will top it with some cheese. And of course, it's always cheaper to buy a brick of cheese and shred it up yourself. Place that cheese right over the top. I still remember back in the day when bagged shredded cheese became a thing. It was such a lifesaver for my mom. Now this one is ready to cook. Before I cook up this lasagna, I'm gonna just preheat my air fryer at 400, just for about three minutes. And while that is just preheating for me, I'm gonna show you how to freeze this other pan. You're gonna to wanna to wrap it up in plastic just nice and secure. And I'm just kind of pressing out any air. Then I'm pulling out my Costco heavy duty foil here. And I'm just gonna cover this all up nice and secure. Then you could just label it, excuse me, all I could find is a hot pink Sharpie marker here. And I'm writing all the instructions on there. And then also today's date, which is 6622, which is Logan's birthday. Now that this air fryer is nice and warm, woo, I'm gonna carefully put that lasagna in there, close it up, and just let it sit. Then open it up, everything's nice and melty, and now it's ready to cook. This recipe has been on my website forever, and so I just have oven directions to follow. If it's not frozen, you bake it at 350 for about 30 minutes, but we know that the air fryer is so much faster than that. So I'm gonna knock that down to 325, or you could run it at 330 if you don't have that five minute increment. And we'll do it, let's start with 15 minutes. Okay, we are about halfway through, and I just want to check on this because I have not made this one in the air fryer before. And it sure looks gorgeous on top. I'm just gonna use my internal temp reader here, and it looks like we do need a little more cook time. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this just to make sure these last few minutes don't mean that my cheese burns, but I think we're gonna be okay. Now it's ready. Oh, I like it when it's bubbly like that. So I can hear the sizzle. The cheese is looking nice and brown. Look at that beauty. I just love that you can pull this off and it only took 15 minutes in the oven. Did you know one serving of this costs less than a hamburger at McDonald's? Really? Yeah. Mmm. Okay, tell me the stars. Town, mm. town. Or are we doing fries? Five out of five. Five out of five. So good. You want the yeah. whole pan? No, yeah. I want the whole pan. We need lasagna more often. Now you could make some homemade apple turnovers. It's really quite easy, but even easier are these ready-made frozen Pepperidge Farms apple pie turnovers. You know I'm all about easy and yummy. This one fits the bill. All right, we'll see the oven directions are having me preheat at super high and then cook for 20 to 25 minutes. Well, this newer model of the Kasori does in fact preheat quite high. Looks like this one was just made for these cute little turnovers. Perfect. Close it up. Ah, there we go. Now it's supposed to cook at 400 for 20 to 25 minutes. We will go 350 and let's start at 10. All right, how are these looking? Oh, they look beautiful. I'm just gonna take a peek at the other side. I do feel like these are easy enough to flip and we could just give them a few more minutes. That way, both sides will be golden brown. So we'll keep it at 350 this time and give it five more minutes. Oh, that was perfect. They're cute and puffy. I'm gonna let them cool right in here. What is this stuff? These are apple turnovers. Ooh, this smells so good. Mmm. Mm. Apple turnovers from the freezer aisle. What do you think? You like them? You don't like them, I can tell. No? Oh boy. Four. She sent it to the trash. I think they're good. Also a four, but like a ten because they're so easy. Mm. Once again, you do not have to turn on your oven to make this recipe, air fryer brownies. Since I'm gonna be doing some brownies, I'm gonna use that bake setting. And I'm just using this brownie mix from Costco because, oh my word, it's so good. And it's so easy. You can pretty much use this with any brownie recipe. 
let me know in the comments below if you are the type of person that's all about scratch brownies or if you make them from the box. Also, I always do applesauce instead of vegetable oil and it works so great. And this little measuring cup is so cute. Now I'm just eyeballing my fill job here. I usually do grease the silicone liners a little bit because things tend to stick. Oh, and I had just enough batter to do nine brownie bites for this one. Now the bake setting on the dual blaze goes for 320 in 20 minutes. I'm just gonna pop that down to about 15 minutes. Start that up. All right, these are done. All right, the easiest way to check and see if these are done is to temp it. 200 internal temp, yes, yes. According to my cooking guide, we want brownies cooked up anywhere from 190 to 210 based on gooey or cakey. So the dual blaze did a fantastic job baking these through and they are not burnt. Let's check out how the inside looks here. Looking good. Mm -hmm. I think I probably could have even cooked these like for 12 minutes. I think I like them a little more gooey. Who loves brownies? Mm. <laughs> Get a head of cauliflower, cut it up into bite-sized pieces, wash it out, give a few to your child, pat it dry, spray your basket. I love my Misto sprayer. Drop the cauliflower in, give it a little squirt of avocado oil. Seven minutes at 400. Melt a tablespoon of butter, grab your favorite buffalo sauce, add a half cup to the butter, give it a shake of salt, a shake of pepper, and give it a good little stir. Cauliflower is roasted, dump it in a bowl, stir in the sauce, make sure everything's coated, drop it back in the air fryer, roast it for seven more minutes, and give it a shake at that halfway point. And check it out, you've got some cauliflower buffalo bites, baby. Right here I've got my top air fryer tools that you will love using. And you can snag my recipe cookbook right here. It's gonna make a perfect Christmas gift. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.